so, so the next talk will be presented by uh, Doug Fuller from uh, Cornelis Network. Uh, um, so he's uh, the director of the software development at uh, Cornelis. Uh, he joined uh, from Red Hat, where he served as a software engineering and manager leading teams, uh, working on the safe distributed storage systems. And Doug's career in HPC has included stints at various universities uh, and including also Oak Ridge National Lab. Um, he holds a bachelor's and master's degrees in computer science from Iowa State Universities. And his master's work at DOEM's lab involved early one-sided communications uh, in the supercomputers. Uh, from his undergraduate days, he remains keenly aware of the critical role of even floppy disks. He started uh, from there in VOLT cluster administration. So, so today you will be talking about uh, introduction to the Cornelis networks um, and the uh, Omnipath architecture. Thank you. Yeah. So let's welcome Doug. Ah, there we go. Okay. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Um, all right. Uh, so, uh, first of all, good morning, uh, and uh, thanks very much for the for the kind introduction and your uh, uh, flexibility presenting today. I know you all uh, already heard from uh, my colleague Denny D'Alessandro uh, about our uh, OmniPath Express software, uh, and uh, I'll be able to also field uh, additional questions about that if you have them. Uh, but uh, originally I was scheduled to talk first, but uh, travel issues uh, kept me from uh, arriving early enough yesterday. Uh, and uh, as it, or early enough uh, on Monday, as it turns out, I missed the, the whole day of presentations Monday because the captain on my airplane uh, called us after circling Columbus saying that the air traffic controller had come down with COVID and we had to wait uh, for them to get another one. So exciting days in, uh, in post COVID travel. Uh, so uh, I know many of you haven't heard of Cornelis Networks before. Uh, we're, we're relatively new on the scene, and so I wanted to take this opportunity to, uh, to introduce us, what we're all about, uh, what we are doing, uh, and uh, what we're aiming to do uh, in the future. So one question I often get, I guess I should go through, let me go through the, the legal disclaimers first. Uh, so, uh, you know, I'm required to present these uh, legal disclaimers in fine print. Uh, you can review those in the slide sorter later. Uh, I get asked often where we came up with the name. Uh, and we came up with the name because uh, one of our founders is a big fan of the book Gödel Escher Bach. Have you ever heard of that? It was published, I think, in 1979, 1980, sometime around there. Uh, and it was a treatise on uh, human intelligence uh, and information organization based on the lives of, uh, of those three uh, luminaries. Uh, and uh, so our founders were looking for a title reference to Gödel Escher Bach, and they landed on Cornelis, which is M.C. Escher's middle name. Uh, so the C in uh, M.C. Escher stands for Cornelis. Uh, so that's where we came up with the name. So uh, although we are a, a relatively young company ourselves, uh, we inherit technology that's been developed by uh, our founders and those that have uh, worked with them uh, for over 20 years. Uh, our founders originally founded uh, Silverstorm uh, back in two, back in 2000, uh, and uh, after a, a merger with Pathscale brought them uh, together in QLogic, they were able to cross pollinate ideas uh, from early in the InfiniBand days. Uh, following the uh, uh, following the the uh, participation in QLogic, uh, Intel purchased the uh, HPC business from QLogic, uh, and then later bought uh, Interconnect Technology from Cray. Uh, and merged these teams and technologies together to create the OmniPath architecture. Uh, the OmniPath architecture was inaugurated uh, in uh, around uh, 2012, 2013, uh, and uh, continued until uh, Intel divested uh, the OmniPath architecture in 2020. Uh, and that happened as a part of Intel uh, canceling the, uh, the K&L product, Knights Landing, Knights Corner. Uh, and Cornelius Networks was formed to divest the OmniPath technology uh, and uh, take it back uh, independent uh, and bring it back to the marketplace. So uh, although we've been around for uh, just a, a couple of years ourselves as Cornelius Networks, we're embodied with uh, a legacy of technology uh, that uh, represents over a billion dollars in R&D investment from the various companies that have contributed intellectual property. Uh, so our current uh, we, we also inherited the current installed OmniPath base with, uh, with over 500 installations, uh, and uh, we continue to, 
uh, develop the architecture and bring it forward for uh, future generations in collaboration with the community and our customers. So uh, it'll be no surprise then uh, to those at MUG that we uh, are essentially a high performance uh, fabric vendor of our own. Uh, so today we, we continue the development of the OmniPath architecture with the OmniPath 100 product. Uh, and uh, th you know this year we've been developing, as you heard from Denny earlier in the conference, uh, our OmniPath Express software, which is a software upgrade for uh, the existing OmniPath architecture, providing uh, better scalability and performance. Uh, then we're continuing to, to develop our next generation 400 gigabit per second OmniPath product that we're calling the CN5000 product. Uh, and that'll include, uh, that'll be developed in 2023 and include additional uh, acceleration features uh, in a follow-on uh, version of the product. Uh, and then uh, we'll continue uh, in future years. Uh, we've already begun development on our future uh, 800 gigabit per second product. Uh, that we're referring to as the, the 6000 series uh, due around 2025. Uh, and so we're continuing this, uh, the, the timeline that was really started out uh, from uh, Intel in the, uh, in the Knight's Landing and Knight's Corner days. So how do we do it? Well, we provide a, a full suite of, uh, of fabric architecture. Uh, so that includes your uh, host and management software, the uh, your uh, PCIe adapters, a full suite of switches, including you know, your, your top of rack and, uh, and data center director class switches, uh, both active and coupler uh, cables and gateways to provide compatibility with other fabrics. Uh, those gateways come in the form of, uh, of pizza box servers that uh, can perform translation for, uh, for foreign fabrics such as InfiniBand and Ethernet. Uh, and so those are often used to uh, connect uh, file systems that use different protocols or uh, to connect different systems together. Uh, and so uh, essentially from, uh, from soup to nuts, from, uh, MPI, uh, from an MPI call uh, all the way down the stack and, uh, and back up, uh, we provide the entire uh, software and hardware fabric experience. I don't think it's necessary in this group to describe exactly what our motivations are for providing high performance computing. Uh, I think this room and those watching online are probably re uh, very well versed in the subject already. Uh, so uh, I'll simply mention that, uh, you know, as I'm sure everyone is aware, uh, as computing power uh, continues to increase in density, additional stress is placed on uh, net the network, especially in terms of scalability and latency. Uh, and so these are our, our, our prime factors uh, as we continue to develop our technology. It's also important to us that we consider costs uh, in every layer uh, of the technology we design. Uh, so we consider costs carefully in uh, every aspect from, the, uh, from our switch chip radix to the, uh, the types of uh, cables that, uh, that we support uh, to make sure that we're not designing uh, unscalable costs into our system as we develop the technology. Uh, so I'll kind of uh, I'll kind of skip this slide and not try to uh, convince you that high performance computing is important or uh, going to have a very bright future. I suspect we all agree with that. Uh, and we're supported across the ecosystem. Uh, so we're entirely vendor and operating, we're entirely vendor, operating system, hardware, CPU, GPU, vendor neutral. Uh, we do everything in our software stack uh, fully open source. Uh, and so uh, we support uh, the popular MPI distributions. I'm very proud to, uh, to add Invapitch support with, uh, with our latest OPX software uh, to the list, thanks to our, our partnership here with the Invapitch project. Uh, that's very exciting for us because uh, it's uh, demonstrated performance gains already in, uh, in early versions of our uh, OmniPath Express software. So uh, I greatly appreciate that collaboration. Uh, we also uh, collaborate closely with uh, processor vendors, both Intel and AMD, uh, along with the uh, storage uh, systems you're familiar with. Uh, the, uh, we support popular AIML frameworks as well as, uh, as popular uh, GPU frameworks. So uh, essentially, we're here to provide you a fabric and allow you to make your own choices in terms of hardware vendors for your systems, accelerators, 
uh, and your uh, software choices in terms of communication library, uh, communication uh, platform, whether that be MPI or PGAS or, uh, or uh, IP if you prefer, uh, or storage system. Uh, and uh, just to toot the horn a bit, we were named uh, HPC Wire, one of their top five new technologies to watch at SC. Uh, we've uh, greatly appreciated that, and, uh, and uh, HPC, HPC Wire has done a couple of stories on us as a result of that, and uh, uh, we also have, uh, have blogged about it. Uh, so we're pretty excited about that. Now, uh, as far as uh, how things are today in uh, the uh, Omnipath 100 series, uh, we currently in the... Uh, we have key innovations that were developed as part of the Omnipath 100 series, uh, including our unique link layer, uh, which provides for, uh, for more latency tolerance uh, and better scalability. Uh, and uh, we're working today on the Omnipath Express software that you heard Denny speak about earlier. I'll mention a couple of key points about it in, in this presentation, but, uh, and uh, I'm happy to take questions about it. I mentioned that we're working on our 400 gigabit per second product that we're calling the CN5000 uh, that uh, will provide additional scalability through uh, better congestion management uh, and, uh, the, and support for uh, additional topologies in addition to uh, compute engines that uh, will, be placed, uh, on the, uh, will be placed on the cards and uh, useful for a variety of, uh, of fabric computing tasks. Uh, and then moving forward to the CN6000 product where uh, we're exploring additional technologies to uh, reduce tail latency and congestion even further uh, and uh, provide 400 gigabits per second of overall bandwidth. So in terms of key innovations in the Omnipath 100 product, uh, one is our unique link layer, which is partly acquired from Cray technology. Uh, and essentially what we do here is uh, we... Uh, we uh, break up our data flows at the sub-packet level, creating flow control digits, or FLITs. Uh, these uh, FLITs involve, uh, these FLITs allow us to interleave messages on the packet, uh, which allows us to uh, deal with higher priority packet preemption and interruption. So for example, if you have some large bulk, bulk data transfer, say uh, from storage, you're performing some uh, loader store to storage that's gigabytes in size, uh, and we receive a higher priority packet, say a small MPI message, uh, all we would be able to do without this, uh, if we had, uh, if all of our link layer uh, were uh, done at packet granularity, is we would have to wait, adding additional latency to that small message while the storage traffic cleared out of the way. Uh, but uh, using, uh, using FLIT routing, uh, when a higher priority uh, packet arrives, we can essentially pause that uh, lower priority bulk traffic and interject the higher priority traffic uh, during the transmission of a packet, even before packet egress. Uh, so this allows us to both reduce latency for higher priority messages and reduce overall tail latency because uh, we're able to make sure that the highest priority uh, packets are transmitted first no matter what. Uh, and we add only a tiny amount of overhead for this in the form of a CRC, uh, and that forms what we refer to as a link transfer packet, which, as far as the link layer is concerned, would be similar to a packet on a conventional network interface. Uh, and then we reassemble the, uh, the flits from a link transfer packet on the receiver. And uh, so again, that allows us to perform this, uh, this packet preemption uh, on an individual packet layer. And so this is a diagram of kind of what I explained. Uh, so essentially, if you imagine here, these, uh, this blue data uh, incoming has a uh, lower priority and is a bulk uh, and is sort of bulk transfer. Uh, you receive on a virtual lane uh, this other packet arriving uh, whose first, whose head arrives after the head of the lower priority packet. Uh, and we're able to inject it as soon as possible, uh, even as we uh, prepare to, to egress the lower priority packet. Uh, and so that results, uh, again, in lower overall latency, especially for, uh, our, uh, for higher priority workloads. Next uh, is the way we protect packets is uh, using, a, using link layer replay uh, rather than, uh, than the conventional forward error correction. We do support forward error correction, but FEC adds, a whole, adds latency uh, in uh, every retransmitted packet. And so as 
uh, as bit error rates increase with increasing bandwidth, the signaling rates, uh, it becomes very, very important to uh, ensure that you have a lower latency packet protection uh, scheme than just doing FEC everywhere. Uh, otherwise, mathematical models demonstrate that a significant percentage of, uh, of traffic flowing over, uh, say, a 100-meter link at 400 gigabits per second is error correction uh, due to the higher bit error rates experienced by, uh, by optical transceivers at that signaling rate over that distance. Uh, so as a result, it's important that we protect our packets from, uh, from link to link, uh, where we're able to uh, check the, the FLIT CRC uh, in, uh, in, and uh, issue corrections at the uh, individual link layer instead of having to do forward error correction from end to end and uh, completely replay and retry packets. Uh, and we, while this is beneficial for us uh, on the OmniPath 100 architecture, we expect that as signaling rates increase, uh, we'll see additional need for uh, scalable and performant error correction. Now, uh, Denny already uh, covered the, the uh, details of, of OmniPath Express uh, OPX, uh, so I won't, uh, I'll just mention some uh, high-level details that uh, I'd like to, uh, to highlight here uh, and uh, allow the, the remainder uh, of, uh, allow Denny to, handle, to have handled the remainder uh, but I'm happy to take questions. So uh, what's important here is that we're developing OPX as uh, a software layer essentially for our uh, next generation, the CN5000 uh, based product, but we're developing it here on uh, the uh, OmniPath 100 architecture for a couple of important reasons. Uh, one is that uh, we feel like it's a nice thing to do. We can provide uh, performance improvements for existing customers but also then we can reduce our, we can reduce deployment risk for uh, the CN5000 series system. Uh, so essentially as we, uh, as we deploy uh, our new software, we're, uh, then we'll be able to uh, change the backend uh, to support the new drivers for the CN5000 product. Uh, so uh, using OPX, we've already demonstrated significant performance improvements, especially in terms of latency and message rates. Uh, and then uh, with the development of the, uh, the CN5000 series, uh, we'll be able to, uh, to deliver additional features that that hardware provides. Uh, and uh, truthfully, as a software guy working at a hardware company, uh, I, am, uh, I am very pleasantly surprised by how much engagement we get from the hardware team. Uh, we're able to work together with them uh, to develop our software features. Uh, and it's just been very refreshing to uh, work at such a collaborative company where we get to uh, co-design our uh, product from soup to nuts. Uh, and it provides us significant advantages, especially as we, as we go forward, uh, when I have uh, dialogue with the, the hardware engineers on a regular basis. It's very refreshing compared to uh, other, uh, essentially, hardware companies that I've been involved with. Uh, and so this is... Uh, essentially why we're doing OPX, because it lets us uh, work out some of these features uh, in advance of the product development. Uh, so uh, OPX is optimized for, uh, for high performance infrastructures uh, based on the Open Fabrics interfaces. Uh, as uh, I'm sure Denny mentioned, but I'd like to highlight, uh, we're, uh, as an open source company, we're dedicated to employing open standards and open source code uh, in all of our software development. Uh, and the Open Fabrics interfaces are a standard developed by the Open Fabrics Alliance, which is an industry academic government uh, standards body in which Cornelis Networks is a participant. Uh, and uh, in fact, uh, Denny's our representative there. Uh, and uh, this ensures that uh, additional features that we develop are accessible uh, to communication layers uh, such as MPI. Uh, and uh, this is partly why our uh, partnership with uh, OSU and the Mvapage project, project is so important with Mvapage 3. We, uh, Mvapage supports the Open Fabrics interfaces and therefore uh, runs cleanly on, uh, on OPX. Uh, this also gains us support uh, immediately from, for other types of programming models, uh, OpenSchmem, Chapel, these, these other PGAS programming models that already support the Open Fabrics interfaces. Uh, and we see uh, a lot of the community heading in this direction. Uh, we see code contributions to the Open Fabrics interfaces from, uh, from Amazon and, uh, and uh, other large technology companies and organizations. Uh, 
so uh, we feel very strongly that, uh, that uh, OFI is uh, an effective meeting point for uh, those looking to provide fabric services to uh, higher level uh, software infrastructures. Uh, and uh, then of course, uh, this is, uh, in, we are an HPC company, we are uh, talking at, at an HPC conference, so performance is obviously paramount. Uh, and uh, a great deal of OPX has involved uh, re-architecting our uh, software layer for maximum performance. Uh, and so that includes optimizing down to the instruction and cache line uh, so that we can deliver the absolute lowest latency possible. Uh, and the fact that we've been able to get to and under a microsecond latency in many cases, uh, even on the, uh, the OmniPath 100 hardware, is really a testament uh, to the effective design uh, that, went into the, uh, that went into the OmniPath architecture in the first place. And again, uh, so the, uh, the most important thing I'd like to point out uh, is that uh, we are not just an open source company, but we're a, uh, an open source upstream first uh, development organization. Uh, in other words, we contribute every line of code that we developed uh, to the projects from which we developed it. Uh, so for example, the, the code that we develop in our driver is submitted upstream to the Linux kernel. Uh, Linus Torvalds accepts all of our code and uh, then the uh, the code becomes available in your Linux distribution. Uh, so rather than providing binary drivers or, uh, or external packages, uh, we submit our code uh, directly to the kernel where it's reviewed and integrated. Uh, so uh, that uh, our hardware uh, simply just works based on the software embedded in Linux. In terms of the Open Fabrics interfaces, they are implemented in uh, a library called LibFabric maintained by the Open Fabrics Interfaces Working Group. Uh, and uh, we submit our OmniPath Express code there for, uh, for review and acceptance as well. Uh, so uh, it, you know, we don't just say that we're open source in the sense that you can go download an ISO from our website somewhere and, and read the code uh, in a web browser. Uh, rather, we actually uh, participate in the communities that we take from. Uh, and we consider that an incredibly important part uh, of both our value to our customers and uh, as a, a collaborative uh, effort that we're able to undertake uh, with our communities and customers. Uh, and I won't, I won't go over the detail of the, uh, the Open Fabrics Interfaces layer cake, but uh, that's presented here. The, the key takeaway from this slide uh, is, let's see, is a laser beam? Maybe not. Uh, the key takeaway from this slide essentially though is that the, uh, the Open Fabrics interfaces allows uh, fabric providers uh, like OmniPath to advertise fabric services to higher level software uh, like MPI uh, layers or, uh, or PGAS models. So the, uh, those software layers can interrogate uh, LibFabric to learn about the the capabilities of the underlying hardware, uh, and then use those capabilities t for maximum performance. Uh, so uh, here in the, the Lib Fabric box, you'll see uh, a bunch of uh, features that we're able to implement and then export via Lib Fabric for consumption by, uh, by MPI layers such as Mbappage. Uh, and uh, then below, you'll see the benefit uh, essentially from, uh, from using Lib Fabric is that Lib Fabric provides uh, our, the semantics layer, the semantic glue between the features provided by the, the uh, fabric hardware uh, and the needs of uh, the application middleware such as uh, MPI uh, or, uh, or other language front ends. Uh, and finally, I'll say just a little bit about uh, our new 400 gigabit per second product. Uh, unfortunately, they don't let me talk about it all that much, uh, requiring NDAs for a lot of things. So uh, the, this, the uh, slide where we're able to present publicly at this time is rather general, but uh, essentially we're aiming for, uh, for the industry's lowest uh, latency and highest message rate uh, with 400 gigabits per second bandwidth. Uh, we're gonna support additional, uh, additional topologies such as uh, that, that you're familiar with now in large, highly scalable fabrics such as Dragonfly, Megafly, HyperX. Uh, and uh, we'll be adding additional congestion control algorithms based on your switch telemetry. Uh, and uh, for details on that, uh, we're happy to, uh, to discuss the, uh, the technical work under NDA. Uh, and I think uh, that leaves me with, uh, with three minutes to take questions. 
so thank you very much for, uh, for your attention. What questions can I answer for you? Next question. We have time for a quick question. Uh, so I saw uh, that you should require uh, A and B and Intel CP, uh, Intel cloud based clusters. Given that ARM has also uh, proved itself to be a powerhouse in the HPC community, do you have plans to support ARM, like ARM architecture? We've been investigating ARM architectures and how they would work with the, the OmniPath architecture. Uh, we don't have a, a, a uh, we don't have support yet, but we're looking into it, yes, for that reason. Thank you. Yeah, good question. Um, so early in the slides, you like mentioned support for AI systems and, and software. Uh, like, do you have any specific designs or features that are targeted to benefit the AI workload? So the 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 AI the AI ML workloads, uh, especially that tend to uh, to utilize GPUs, they use the these GPU collective communication libraries. Uh, and so uh, we support and directly accelerate them using DMA engines present on our uh, on our uh, interface cards. Uh, so the the design, obviously, the the OmniPath 100 design is fixed, uh, but we're able to leverage its features to accelerate performance for for those particular workloads. I see. Thank you. Any any other questions? Um, thank you for the wonderful talk. Do you have any support for in-network uh, computation for like uh, all reduce operation or other reduction operations for the AI? So the uh, we're working on that for our 400 gigabit per second product uh, to provide uh, to provide uh, in-network computing on the uh, on the individual cards. Our switches don't do uh, any in-network processing. Thank you. Any, any additional questions from remote? Anybody has asked any questions? Okay, so let's then give uh, thanks to the- uh, re Real quick, we have a question from the, the chat. Oh. Uh, I believe it's Mahesh asked, will the PSM and Verbs interface be deprecated in OPX? Uh, PSM, uh, so, oh no, it, so OPX uh, can exist alongside the, the PSM and Verbs interfaces. Uh, from remote. Okay, so uh, thanks again. Uh, Thank you. So we'll switch to the next talk, but before that, I